Welcome to Rebecca Sounds Reveille. This is an exciting show because today we are going to illuminate a guest who is a United States Navy veteran. He is also an artist, a singer, a songwriter, recording artist, a performer, and he is the owner of Swing Samurai Music. With me today, my guest has released four albums. And I've got to tell you, they are pretty exciting. One of them is In California Country, Mended Fences, Where We Come From, and most recently, and we're going to talk about that, Can You Feel This? What a timing for that to come out, I've got to tell you. He's been nominated for a number of of Song of the Year awards, and he has also been involved with a lot of bands. We're going to talk about that also, but he has also been on a number of compilations. One of them is Volume One of Keeping It Country. He's worked all over the San, San Fernando Valley, Valley in California, and I've got to tell you what's really fascinating is he has immersed himself in blues and Americana, and he's gravitated towards music and poetry. A lot of, a lot of wordsmiths like Dylan and Dr. Seuss may come to mind for you, but it has for him, along with Yeats, and he has mended all of those things together to blend, well, country blues, folk, rock, a sound that is sort of between Hank Williams and Cowboy Junkies. You're going to love this. And we're going to talk with him today. But what's really exciting is he's been working with a producer by the name of Max Allen, who recently signed him with Allswell Records. So with, and that's an imprint out of Nashville. Nashville. So with me, without any further ado, I'm going to bring, with my, bring to you with us my guest, none other than Ray William Roldan. Welcome to the show. Thank you, thank you. I am absolutely excited to have you on the show because you have done so much with everything that you've done. You've been immersed in so many things and it has taken you so many different places. But I want to talk with you first about how you started out with what you have done because you have such an incredible background. Can you tell me how you first started out with an outlaw biker dad and a 16-year-old mother in California? Well, um, my, uh, my mother at the time was going to Hollywood High and she was walking to the library. Uh, she was a senior or maybe 11th grade. Anyhow, um, my father pulled up in a black Cadillac, it said, and convertible. And, you know, this, this Cuban um, biker, you know, tattooed guy, and this is in the 50s, and kind of uh, much to the dismay of my grandfather swept her away and they eloped a few weeks later and, you know, ran off. And couple years later it was I was born and uh, exciting. yeah yeah it was uh, it, it was a very tumultuous relationship and uh, he was um, you know he raced cars and motorcycles and definitely was an outlaw biker you know and uh, um, you know they they ended up with four kids and then he was he passed when I was a little after I, my, I was five years old and, um, uh, and left me the oldest of four kids. And, you know, and then we went, we went from there. We ended up coming back to California, um, spent about eight years on and off homeless, um, living in hotel rooms and in the car. And, you know, it was a real tough, until I finally, you know, left home and joined the Navy. I was like, okay, I've had enough. I am know. so sorry. That, 
that is a challenging childhood. Yeah. But you've come a long way since then because you've utilized all of those things to lift you higher and to do yeah. something that has made you quite successful now. Yes. Well, I, I, I learned what I didn't want to be and where I didn't want to be. Um, and I think that's really important for people. It's, it's, it's something to go through. So, and, and I also learned that I wasn't a victim that, that I, I could have a choice and in whatever I was doing. And this took me, you know, a few years, trust me. Uh, uh, I had to really self-reflect and study philosophies and do a lot of things over the years to, to get to a point where I could um, go, oh, wait, you know, I'm not a victim. I, I, I'm being a victim will not help me. It will not empower me. It will not, you know, and that's kind of how I looked at, it, you know, N not that I haven't made mistakes, but you know, I, I inevitably, excuse me, uh, became a father at the age of 34, and my son is my heart. Um, he's 27 and a musician. And uh, um, for me, that was um, a healing, a really huge healing process, because I found that I could, in loving him, I could heal what I didn't get, you know, I could, it really helped me. And that is the, the gift you get from something like that. It's not, it's not resenting or hating or anything like that. It's, it's really the, um, uh, the, the process of the overcoming and giving love, you know, is what really makes a big difference. So, I mean, that's, that's my, that's my soapbox. <laughs> well, you've actually said some very powerful things in all of those things that you just said, overcoming a victim mentality, making choices and giving love. Those are three huge things that I think that the audience really needs to embrace because yeah. those, all of those things will make an absolute shift in the direction of someone's life. Yes. Oh yeah. It's kind of, it's kind of like opening the curtains in a dark room. You know, it, 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 you realize that, Hey, it's just the room that's dark. You know, you open the curtains and the light comes in. I mean, I've been lucky. I've been an artist my whole life. Uh, I have, my grandfather was after my father passed, my grandfather was my mentor. But then he passed it at when I was 12 and I happened to be staying with him when he, when he, uh, when he passed, uh, when they took him to the hospital, I was with him right, you know, close to the last. And, um, that really knocked me down for a while. But, um, once again, what that did was it, it, his loving me, it taught me how powerful loving somebody is how powerful it is to not, not even being loved, but to love people, uh, to love your kids, to love your wife or your, you know, that doesn't always mean that you're going to have a successful relationship or you're not going to, you're, you're of course going to have ups and downs in anything you do, but it is that it is the, um, the, the axiom, the, the, the main thing that I learned that, that, what I can fall back on years ago, I, I, someone, you know, said, how did you uh, learn to be a parent? And I said, I really didn't cause I didn't have any. Um, I all, but the only, one thing I knew no matter what was if I loved my kid, regardless of making mistakes or anything, or, or am I, should I let him do this? Should I not let him do that? If I always knew that I loved my kid and I showed that, that was the one thing I knew I was doing right regardless of anything else. So, you know. No, what you say is absolutely so powerful. Love is huge. And I think oftentimes we forget that giving it sometimes is more rewarding than 
getting it. And so oftentimes people seek out, I have to get this boyfriend, girlfriend, and they find that they are unhappy when they're in this unhealthy relationship. And so then they go on to the next one and it happens again and they end up in this cycle. But aside from talking about that, because you've really laid out a huge, I hope that someone that is listening to this will go back and listen to this again and again, what you've just said, because you've laid out some very, very important points. And if they listen to this and it really begins to be absorbed and applied, it will make a huge difference. But aside from that, you've taken all of those things. These were very, very hard things that you came by and you began to use them and express them through music. And I know that these are things that you've helped other people change through their listening to what you have shared through your own. I know, I know when we write, it's an expression of what we've either experienced or we are feeling or both. So how did you get on this journey where you started playing and performing in front of others? Well, it's, it's interesting. Um, I, you know, for, for, I, I was, I've always been an artist. I've been a sculptor and I, I drew for years. I, I've always been an artist. My grandfather started teaching me to watercolor and to draw when I was very young. He started me with drum lessons. He was a swing drummer out of Chicago out of the thirties. And he was also an artist and he came out to Hollywood in the, I guess the late forties, early fifties. My grandmother uh, danced Broadway and off Broadway. This is my mother's parents. And uh, so there was this whole show business thing, but they were also the show business people that didn't, they didn't make it. They weren't, they didn't become super successful out of, out of it. And you know, they had their, their issues and stuff. But I always had that in my blood. And um, the first part of my life, I spent more of it drawing and sculpting and things like that. And then um, later on, I, I, a side note, when I was a kid, I used to hang out at the drugstore reading a magazine called Hit Parade. And Hit Parade was a magazine that came out every week with all the lyrics to the latest songs and yes. I, and I just read and read and read and learned all these songs and 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 I think it it must have sunk in because I never did well in school I I was out of I, I joined the Navy out of 10th grade I didn't because I had a rough life as a kid so I did not do well in school um so I didn't really learn proper grammar, proper English, you know, things like that. That came later. I had to teach myself that. But, but um, lyrics and stories were always very important to me. So, um, you know, I, I did that, all that as a kid, but I never really, it wasn't until I was much older that um, I realized that I had the ability to write and to write poetry and, and stories and songs. And, um, and then basically a friend of mine uh, at one point, I had been playing harmonica, blues harmonica for years uh, with people, but you know, just little things. And then a friend of mine needed a vocalist in his band and I had terrible stage fright. So we would be in the recording uh, in his recording studio, and I would stand outside the door with the mic while the band was inside in a pair of headphones because I was too embarrassed to sing in front of anybody. Oh, wow. Um, which is cool because he's kind of the catalyst. He was a, he was a contractor friend of mine, and, and, uh, and he was kind of like, hey, we need this singer. Why don't you try it? And that's kind of how it how it kind of worked for me. And then I also went to acting classes for a couple years to just make myself feel comfortable in front of people to, to speak and 
play and, and show myself. I never, I didn't accept myself as that kind of an artist until much later. I, I was, I wouldn't tell someone I'm a musician or I'm an artist. They would see my guitars and they'd say, Hey, what, why don't you play that? And I would, you know, so it took, it took, it was a process. That's actually a good point that I want to make too to the audience is oftentimes people think if I go to acting classes, that means that um, I want to go into the acting field or I want to be on camera. And I want to point out right here too, that that also is not necessarily the case. You can take it because you want to feel more confident in the things that you do in interacting with other people. Or if you have to be in business and go on stage or do a presentation. These are things that are confidence building skills and will also show you interpersonal skills. And there's, there's just so much more to this. And I, I just wanted to bring that out because this is a good point that you've made. Yeah, it was, um, it was, uh, it was very cool because it teaches you how to see yourself. So when you're up on stage or whatever you're doing, because before that, one problem with stage fright is you have some weird idea of what you must look like to everybody. And what this teaches you is how to see yourself in a realistic way, you know, without the critical thoughts and everything else. And, and it was very cool for me. I mean, I was literally, you know, acting and, and performing with like Broadway artists and, and you name it and, and well-trained people. And I'm self-taught through, you know, but um, the one thing that my uh, uh, Gary Imhoff was my acting teacher and he, he said, you, you, you're very good. You just be you, just be natural. And that's, I thought, well, I can do that, you know? <laughs> and, uh, so, you know, that's, that's what I did. And, and it really helped a lot. And, you know, and it still takes doing a lot of shows, like getting in front of people because it's still nerve wracking, you know, uh -huh. people to be happy. That was my biggest problem is I was so stuck on, oh, are they happy? Am I, am I doing a good job? Am I wasting their time? But that's not really how you should approach it. You want to do it you want to feel good about what you just do it. And then if you're feeling good and you're, and you've got some, you know, you know what you're doing, people will enjoy it and they'll enjoy it as you enjoy it. I love That's that. I, I love that. So you went on to not only start your own, um, you've got, um, let's see. You've got swing samurai music, and you have which I, I I don't necessarily use that anymore. It's R W Roldan music now. Okay, okay. Um, that was back. That came from I was a martial artist for many years, and samurai were artists. They were masters. They could be a potter. They could be people. Don't realize they weren't just guys who swung swords. And but I took samurai, and then my grandfather is a swing drummer. And who started me and I put them together and I came out with Swing Samurai. I love it. It's in country music and Americana. That's a really odd title for, a, you know, it's hard for them to, to, for people to understand. It. So that's why I kind of stopped. I don't use that as much anymore. Mm -hmm. So you have, um, you have your albums under that and then you yes, have three of them yes yes you have three albums under that and then you have now signed with all's well and yes. this is pretty exciting because not only that you're on um albums of comp compilations that uh, oftentimes people are going wow this is really cool and they don't pick up on things sometimes and i really wanted to point this out because this is really exciting i picked up on this one that I announced earlier at the very beginning of the show, but there's other ones with big names. Tim McGraw is one that you've been on one of his compilations, compilations and yeah. this goes on. But I wanna talk about what you have coming out now because especially with the climate that we're in, I think that this is really, really good time to talk a bit. Tell me a little bit 
about your new album? Um, the new album, I, uh, my wife uh, has a, a salon up in Topanga, California, Neil Young's old stomping ground. And, um, uh, and one of her customers came in and she was uh, the wife of Max Allen, the producer. And um, I had, my wife and I had gotten back together. Quick side note, my wife and I were on the streets as teenagers and then didn't see each other for 37 years. And then six years ago, got back together again. And she has a salon up there. Is that cool, right? And uh, um, uh, so she introduced me to Max and we just started, you know, spitballing and, and putting ideas down and I'm a kind of a prolific writer. I write a lot of songs and I'm always writing. And um, I'd done the first three albums and I wasn't happy with them. They were a little too slick. They weren't what I was, they weren't what I heard in my head, you know? So um, with Max, we kept it really organic. And that was the title, Can You Feel This? I wanted, I think, what the artist feels is should be what the audience feels mm -hmm. and and that is a hard thing to pull off and especially when you're putting it on a cd or on the radio and you're you're putting it out there it can get lost and and um so that was very important to me and the other thing we wanted to do uh we decided was it was going to go to vinyl so we wanted to mix it so it would sound good on vinyl and um, and just Max and I, he's just this amazing multi-instrumentalist artist, uh, quite a bit younger than I am. Um, and uh, so he had his own ideas and everything. And him and I would sit and we probably recorded about 20 songs. And we would just sit for about four hours in the studio for each song and just kind of suss it out, figure out where it was going to go. And then we would come back to it and you know, finish the song, but, um, you know, uh, it, it was, it, it allowed me, and, and it happened to be all these songs I wrote in Topanga in my new relationship. And um, uh, we have this um, beautiful property up in the hills that where I filmed uh, The Color Of, you can see me, the, the cars are, the old truck I'm driving is on the property. And, and um, so anyhow, it just kind of inspired everything, being with Lauren, being in, in the Topanga Hills, this new producer, everything just sort of came together. And, and uh, I I'm, I'm finally can say I'm, I'm happy with this. I, of course, you know, I would like to go farther, but I'm happy with this product, what we did. And it's as close to anything I've ever heard in my head coming out so you know that's really exciting that you say that not that many people talk about that expression that's going on within and really being meshed with what has come out externally oftentimes it's just kind of this is what's been done we release it and we move on yeah really that is so crucial because that's your masterpiece yeah yeah and we do want it to be an expression of what we have created. And this is really refreshing to hear that that is as close as to what's going on in there. That, that is really exciting. Yes, yes. It's important to have a producer that not only listens, but has input, but his he's not trying to put his stamp on it. He's trying to figure out what the best part of you is that will work, you know? So, you know, uh, I mean, believe me, I've written many songs that would, could not, I would not put out or, or, you know, and I have a habit. I'll just finish the song. Even if I don't like it, I'll finish the song and make it, you know, but um, that is the important thing is having someone who shares your vision. You know, we did a lot of percussions. Um, uh, there's a song called Those Who Fall. You just put a piece of plywood on the, on the floor. I put some, some nice cowboy, some of my cowboy boots on, and I 
I did all the percussions by tapping on the floor and miking it. And, and we used the lampshade as a bass drum, you know, and we did all these kind of wild things that you wouldn't know if you listened to it, but we did it very organically. The, and, and when you listen to it, you don't really know that. Unless you're a drummer, you, you probably don't know that's going on, but we really, we really tried to keep things, like I said, can you feel this? It's, it, it was, nothing came out of a can. You know, it, it was. I, mean, I love that. Yeah. I love that. And I think that with your title, there is oftentimes we don't realize how many situations that that is applicable to. It's, yeah. really, it's really neat. And I think you've nailed it. Yes. I really yeah. do. So this, yeah. is, this is really exciting. I'm excited for it to come out. And I'm really excited with where you have evolved because I want to share too something really exciting with where you have come in the frame work of a home because you have something kind of exciting about the home that you have um, there and I think you're there right now. Yes I'm in Silver Lake yes. There's a little sort of about this that you're okay with but some people kind of have a little story about this and I'm wondering if you'll share that with the audience well um, the house we have here in Silver Lake we're my wife and I were we're trying to plan for our retirement uh, you know and so she found this house um, I believe through a friend uh, and it was interesting because it was being sold but it wasn't being shown anywhere and she just happened to find out through some friends and she called me one day and she goes, can you meet me over here in Silver Lake? We're going to look at this house. She grew up in Silver Lake. So she, uh, this has always been kind of a neighborhood that, that she's been aware of. And Silver Lake is um, kind of southeast of Hollywood. Um, uh, literally, if you're sitting on our top floor looking out the window, you see the Hollywood sign the observatory, all of Hollywood, Century City, everything. We have this beautiful view. We're on a hill. And, uh, but this house was built by Fatty Arbo. And uh, in, uh, he started building it in 1910, and they finished it in 1918. And, um, and it's still probably 95% original. So it still has all the old stained glass and the... the plaster ceilings or really high ceiling oak oak floors and everything and you know but it's 110 years old so there's there's work but i spent i spent 30 years doing construction work building things so i'm kind of like perfect for this situation <laughs> you know but it's a it's a super creative place um there's been musicians living here forever uh, on and off, and um, there's stories of, you know, Elton John stayed here, you know, uh, the, the drummer from the band Hole, Courtney Love, uh, she lived here for the past 12 years before we bought it, and, um, and with a bunch of artists living here, and she got married here to her wife, actually, on the back porch, it's in a film she did, and, uh, uh, but it's very cool, it looks like a haunted house, it's, it's, it's just a really neat and a really creative place to write from. And, and uh, we're going to be doing some house televised or, or video house concerts here. Uh, you know, not, not with a lot of people right now, of course, but uh, we're going to be filming it so people can enjoy it too. But yeah, that's, that's, that's what this is for us. I absolutely love this. And so I just want to share with the audience that this has been so amazing where you have come from, where you are now, that they have the power to do the exact same thing that they have. And in the meantime, I want them to be able to connect with you audi audibly, visually, uh, social media wise, everything that they can to absorb the inspiration 
that you can provide to them so that they can move forward in the same direction that you have. Can you share some of the links that you have that they can connect with you, get a hold of your music and other things, and just re re be able to begin to take hold of all of this and move in the same direction that you did through you? Well, uh, I appreciate that. Um, uh, I have, we've just uh, rebuilt uh, the rwrolldan.com is my website. Um, and uh, if you Google RW Roldan or Ray William Roldan, which is my full name, I'm all over the place. I, I'm on, I don't know, a lot, hundreds of, I'm a, a lot, in a lot of places. Yes, yes, you are, you are. And I, I did all that myself. I, I spent many years training myself on social media and just kind of reaching out to people and, you know, uh, that, that comes from being a little shy. So it was a little easier, you know, I'm like, well, I can do this and I can reach people. Sure. Populations, um, I, I found were a great way to get myself with other artists and get out there. And I've been on about 25 of them. So I, I really utilize that. And, uh, once again, through social media, I learned so much. You can reach people. I, I mean, and the, the, the truth is what, what it's about is reaching out in any way you can and getting and helping people and getting help yourself and asking for help. That's what, it, what it's really about and realizing that you deserve help. Everybody does. And, and, and being willing to, to just be open to it, you know? And so, so uh, Reverb Nation, uh, Facebook, I'm kind of on everywhere. If you, if you look, you know, for my name, I have YouTube, I have several videos. I have The Color Of, which is the video I, I, a song I wrote on racism, which is in, in my latest album. And, uh, you know, my, my family on my dad's side came from Cuba and from Spain before that. And my mom's side were German and English. And you, know, it's, you look at somebody and you, you think you know them, but you don't. You, you see the color of their skin, but you know nothing about them. So for me, it was important to put that, yes. that, that song out there. Um, and, uh, you know, that's that's... That's kind of what I do. And though, I mean, I don't know if I clearly told you what the links were, but it's uh, R.W. Roll. The guys from All's Well uh, Records, by the way, are from the band Lifehouse. And um, they started their own record label and they like my music. And they're friends of Max. And that's how this all came about. So they've been very sweet and um, uh helped me with this new album and, and they're just great guys. And um, they also have a band called Oswald, which they're just amazing music, great young cats. You know, I, I, I really like these people. And, um, you know, uh, I've, I've been on, a, you know, a few podcasts, uh, Adam Carolla's podcast and, and a bunch of, you know, I kind of get around, so. <laughs> this is a good thing. Yes, yes. This is a really good thing. Well, I definitely am going to get your information out there. I really do want the audience to connect with you. And I want to thank you so much for being on the show today. I want to thank you. What you're doing is wonderful once again. And I really appreciate it. And I know the folks appreciate it. Thank you so much. And I want to thank all of you for tuning in to another episode of Rebecca Sounds Reveille. Make sure that you connect with Ray on social media and all of the different venues that you can, anywhere from Facebook to LinkedIn, but also do check out anywhere you can download his information or even listen through podcasts such as Spotify. Check out Crybaby. Definitely go to his website, rwrolldan.com. Also, All's Well Records, A-L-L-S-W-E-L-L-S, records.com. And I want to ensure that I don't forget to tell you to make sure to share this with everybody you know, all your friends and family on social media and 
everyone you don't. Thanks for tuning in.